The ability to cheat death is a power only one has achieved. In that moment, Sidious may have been referring to Plagueis. However, only one Sith Lord had truly discovered the power of immortality. This technique is something that Sidious actually used himself in both canon and legends, this power being essence transfer. Invented by the one and only Darth Endedu, the immortal god king of Prakith. So stick with us today, curious scholars of the galaxy, as we delve into the holocron of one of the most powerful Sith in Star Wars history, Darth Andedu, and discuss his story as well as his various powers and abilities within the Force. Darth Andedu was an interesting case. Nearly all of the records of the Dark Lord were right from the galactic record by the Jedi, as they feared the implications of this power and sought to discourage any such emulation of his horrible deeds, as they saw his power as a violation of the living Force itself. A disgrace to the Force. Only whispers of his existence floated around the galaxy by the time of the Darth Bane era. Bane, who was looking for a way to extend his life, found a mention of Darth Endedu in his studies. Inspired, he then promptly spent a small fortune to uncover anything else about the ancient Sith Lord. Eventually, his endeavors would be fruitful, as a treasure hunter he had hired found a small scroll about the God King that had survived the mass purge of information from the Jedi. Despite all of their efforts, the Jedi had failed to completely wipe Endedu from the history books. Darth Bane took the scroll, which led him to the deep core world of Prakith to retrieve the ancient Sith Lord's holocron, which was rumored to still be intact. Revered as the pioneer of the Darth title, Andedi was a Dark Lord of the Sith that reigned sometime during the Hundred Year Darkness. He had trained under the Dark Lord such as Karnas Mur, who was one of the first Dark Jedi that had split during the Second Great Schism, with the Sith Lord, the first Sith Lord in fact, Ajunta Paul. Darth and Dedu ruled over the Sith homeworld of Korriban and led a legion of Sith underlings who he accurately believed to be his true enemies. Because of this, and Dedu kept his knowledge from them and hoarded his power for himself, thus causing his followers to become enraged and jealous. As true Sith fashion, they conspired against him and eventually overthrew the Dark Lord. However, this Sith God wasn't so easily defeated as he faked his own death and built a false tomb upon Korriban fleeing his homeworld for the world of Prakith. Once on Prakith, he began his own dark side cult, which called themselves the Malevolence. Using his dark sorcery, he founded the ability of Essence Transfer, an ability that would later be utilized to great success by the Dark Lord Sidious. And Dedu's master, Karnas Mur, had delved into the possibility of Sith healing. As stated by Darth Bane, healing isn't one of the Dark Side's strongest suits. The Dark Side serves to destroy, not to construct and build. In order to heal, one has to use the love and compassionate powers of the Light Side. The Dark Side can only be harnessed into the negative and the destructive, so it was quite a feat to have come across any sort of method of Sith healing. Considering that Sith usually use their pain as power, and Dedu wanted to take Karnas Mur's teachings further and go somewhere darker, cheating death entirely. As we stated earlier, this was done with the strange and taboo practice of Essence Transfer, which was a ritual where the caster would have their own spirit leave their body and go into another. In Legends, Sidious did this in a few clone bodies, and Endedu used this to stay alive for thousands of years successfully. These terrible powers and his immortality caused him to be Joan, and revered as the immortal god king by his cult. Soon, the hyperspace lanes to Prakith closed, leaving it in complete and total isolation from the rest of the galaxy. As a quick side note for those of you unfamiliar with the mechanics of hyperspace, let me get you up to speed. It is a common misconception that hyperspace is just going really, really fast. This mistake is most likely to be blamed on the colloquial term light speed. Hyperspace, though, is not in fact ships traveling at light speed. In Star Wars, there are a wormhole-like tunnels that occupy space. These tunnels are sort of in their own dimension, which is why ships traveling in them don't just crash into other planets or anything else in the way. These more well-traveled tunnels are called hyperspace lanes. The entire galaxy is connected like veins by hyperspace lanes, like a space version of an interstate. However, there are less traveled lanes, like the ones that go into the deep core that are erratic, opening and closing at random. This is the reason why voyages into the deep core are incredibly dangerous in Star Wars mythos. Anyway, the hyperspace lane closed to Prakith, which effectively sealed it off from the rest of the galaxy. However, Andedu had become paranoid and sealed himself away in his fortress with his knowledge as well as his holocron. There, he stayed until his final physical demise, though his spirit would live on. His cult continued to worship their god king for many generations past his death as Endedu waited to be resurrected to rule over them once more. 
His spirit lived on well past the Clone Wars, and even into the age of Luke Skywalker. His holocron, meanwhile, had bounced around the galaxy after it was stolen from Bane, eventually landing into the hands of Count Dooku during the Clone Wars era. Far into the future, Darth Krayt's body was failing after a battle with the Yuuzhan Vong, so he dispatched his most trusted advisor, Darth Warlock, to Prakith to find out more information on Endedu's power. The legend of Endedu carrying from generation to Sith, with every single Sith Lord revering his power, specifically though, Essence Transfer. This was because the gatekeeper of Endedu's holocron refused to allow Krayt into his knowledge, calling him a Sith pretender. Darth Warlock went to the fortress of Prakith, where he entered battle with Endedu's spirit. Endedu fought him with illusory and with powerful force lightning. However, it was Darth Warlock that would be victorious, as he won the mind battle by using Endedu's greatest weakness, his paranoia. Warlock convinced the dead Dark Lord that the others were burning all of his scrolls and tombs, and then went on to mock him to bring out his true cowardice. Ultimately, Darth Warlock destroyed the spirit of Endedu once and for all, ending his terrible shadow, even though he had lived for several millennia. Darth Endedu's powers were just as legendary as he was. Besides his proficiency with the Force, as well as Force Lightning and Telekinesis, he was adept at Sith sorcery and could actually cheat death. Unlike many other Sith Lords before him and after him, Darth Endedu actually cheated death. He actually managed to survive his own physical demise and live on well after, as well as reign over an entire planet that being Prakith for generations by this ability, a Sith technique that Sidious would later use to great effect as well. Endedu had stored all of this knowledge and power within his holocron. Should the device come into contact with his corpse, it would sap the life energy from the holder and resurrect the God King. And Dadu did wield a lightsaber in life, storing the crystal within the holocron. The crystal was gifted to the fallen Jedi Master, Quinlan Voss, after he retrieved the holocron for Dooku. Darth Warlock had mentioned that his power was not from the flesh, but from his mind, able to cast powerful illusory constructs to overwhelm his opponents. So friends, what do you think of this terrible Sith Lord? Let us know in the comments below what other characters you would like to see a video in history on like this. In the meantime, may the Force be with you, and have a great day.